Hello, Chris Calver here with another VexCode VR tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at variables. Um, and we'll also look at lists as well in the same tutorial. So variables and lists are uh, a really important way of being able to control data and optimize uh, the way that your code works. Um, so let's have a quick look at the variables toolbox. See what we've got here. So we have um, two different types of variables. So here we have make a variable and that's where we can store a numerical value. Now a variable um, by its very name is something that can be varied. It's a piece of data that can be stored uh, that can that you can change. You can perform mathematical functions on it uh, or you can um, you can just use uh, set blocks in your code to change that number. Um, but it's a variable. It's something that can be changed. So we can have numerical variables. That's make a variable. Or we can have Boolean variables. And a Boolean is true or false. Um, a list is ever so slightly different. We have um, a list or a two-dimensional list, a 2D list. Um, and, a, and a list is an array of data. Uh, so it's an array of variables all stored in the same table. So you can sort of consider it a table. So um, a list is as it, uh, uh, as it kind of implies. It's just a, um, a single column um, with various bits of data in it. And you can create a list that is up to... 20 rows long. Uh, a two-dimensional list is a table much like you'd be used to seeing in a spreadsheet. So it has rows and columns. Um, and uh, and so you can get more pieces of data. So you can have up to 20 rows, so 20 rows up and down, and then 20 columns left to right, um, which uh, gives you a significant amount of uh, data storage. I'm going to do uh, a very simple little program using uh, some variables and a two-dimensional list so that you can kind of see how these work and also see how you can make your code more efficient um, by using lists. And uh, I'm going to start by creating um, a two-dimensional list so that you can see kind of what the uh, what the 2D list looks like um, and, uh, and how we're going to start to store some data in it. Um, so I'm going to go make a two-dimensional list uh, and I'm going to call my two-dimensional list shapes. And I'm going to create um, three, uh, sorry, four rows and three columns in this particular list. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this list to store uh, some dimensional details for shapes that we're going to get the robot to draw. Um, and by storing those uh, in a list, I can then write a piece of code that references that list and uses the data to draw the shapes. Um, so the first thing I want to do is set all of the values in my table. Um, and so I'll use this block here where it says set shapes to, and then all of my lists, if I have multiple lists, would be available uh, in this dropdown. So as I drop this in, you'll see now that that block now represents my uh, four row and three column list. And what I'm going to use this um, list for, this two dimensional list, is to store firstly the number of sides of my shapes. So I'm going to draw a triangle, a square, uh, a pentagon and a hexagon. So I'm going to have three sides, four sides, five sides, six sides. So the first um, column here is the number of sides. So three, four, five and six. The next column is going to be the length of the side. Um, I'm going to just pick some values out of the air for this and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to say 400 millimeters for the sides of my triangle and my square. Um, I'll probably make them a bit smaller for the pentagon so we don't take up too much room. Uh, maybe 250 and maybe a bit smaller again for the hexagon, 200. So this is the length of my sides in millimetres. And the last column is the angle that the robot needs to turn in order to make that shape. So for a triangle, uh, there are three turns and they're going to be 120 degrees each. So 360 degrees in total that we need to move to make that uh, equilateral triangle. Um, so divide that 360 by three, that gives us 120 degrees for each turn. For a square, it's going to be 90 degrees for each turn. 
Um, for a pentagon, it's 360 divided by 5, so 72, because it's got 5 uh, corners. And then um, for the hexagon, 60 degrees, because it's um, divided by 6. So there's the data stored in our table for the four different shapes um, that we want to draw. Um, and then I'm going to write a little bit of code to, to draw those shapes. Now before I do that, the other thing I want to do is set up a variable. I'm going to set the variable up now and then we'll, as we progress through the, co the code, explain a little bit more about what it actually does. So I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call this one next shape. So I've now created a variable called next shape. Um, and I can set it to a number. So if I use the drop down here, you can see I have next shape there and I can set it to a value. I'm going to do that right at the start of my program and I'm going to set it initially to one. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about why we're doing that um, as we create the rest of the code. Okay, let me quickly open up the playground. Um, we're going to use the art canvas for this. Uh, and I'll explain what we're going to do um, as I'm creating the code. So the first, all, all I really want to do is I want to draw my triangle here, then a square, uh, then a pentagon, and then a hexagon. And um, just to, to show that we can use the same code to repeat that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make my robot drive over to this side. We want to start on the left and we're going to work our way across. So I'm going to use my drivetrain commands for that. I could use turn left for 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to use throughout this program, turn to heading. And again, I'll explain why uh, as we progress through the code and it becomes a little more obvious. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to turn to heading. And I want to turn to the heading at the left, which will be, so if you recall from my previous videos, with heading 0 is straight ahead, 90 degrees to the right, um, 180 degrees is kind of compass south, and then this way would be 270. So I want to turn to heading 270 degrees. And I want to drive all the way over to the left of the field. Um, and um, if I drive 900 millimeters this way, that will get me pretty much to the edge because remember these fields are uh, 2,000 millimeters wide and um, the playgrounds are 2,000 millimeters wide. Um, I don't want to go 1,000 because I'll, as I turn, I'll bump the wall. So I'm going to go 900 um, over there. And then I want to start every time I want to start with the robot facing compass north. So I'm going to turn to heading zero degrees. So I'll be facing back the way I am now up the field. So I'm going to start there. So that's the start of my code. Now comes the, uh, the sort of the clever part that's going to use the data um, from the lists. So we have four different shapes in the list that we want to draw. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is put in a repeat loop. And I could say repeat four times because I know we've got four shapes, but um, I want to demonstrate that in fact you don't even need to to limit yourself to saying hey it's four times because what you can do is if you go into variables we have uh, this um, command here which is length of and then whatever uh, table or um, list we're looking at and then either the rows or the columns I can grab that and put that in here so I'm looking at the length of the shapes list uh, and in terms of number of rows. So what the um, program will do is say, well, how long is this? It's one, two, three, four rows long. So it's four times that I need to repeat it. Um, you could also change this to um, columns uh, and it would be three, but because we're working down this way, we want, uh, we want to use rows. So what that means is it becomes dynamic. Um, if it was a longer list with more data in, it would just repeat more times to cover yourself. So uh, you don't then need to go back and change this. Um, you know, if you change the size of the shapes uh, list and put more shapes in, the code will just deal with it because it will then look at the list, say the list has got bigger, I need to repeat more times. So we need to repeat it that many times. And each time um, we need to start by putting the pen down so we can start drawing. And then we need to draw the first shape, which again is going to be another repeat loop because each shape is uh, an equal number of sides, uh, sorry, a number of sides of equal length uh, and a number of turns of an equal angle. Um, so we can just use a repeat loop for this. So we're going to repeat a certain amount of times. Um, and the amount of times we need to repeat 
is governed by how many sides the shape has. So this first uh, column of data here. So now I need to go and fetch that column of data. And this is where my variable comes in. Because this variable is storing which shape we're looking at now. So at the moment, it's shape one. That's the next one we want to look at. So basically, row one of data. So what I'm going to do is go to the variables. And this is where I can retrieve data um, from my list. And what this will do is it will return the value in row whatever I put in here and column whatever I put in here. So if I wanted to grab, say, this piece of data here, it would be row two, column three. So if I wanted that piece of data, that's how I would retrieve it. But I want this to be ever so slightly dynamic. So what I'm going to do is actually grab it using a variable. So next shape, that's my variable there, I'm going to put into my row. And so the first time when this is number one, it's going to look at row one. It's always going to be column one because all of my, this isn't dynamic, all of my um, shape uh, repeat information is here. The amount of sides that it got is always in column one. So I can put that in there. So it's going to repeat um, at the moment row one, column one. So here, repeat three times. And so how do we draw a triangle? Well, we'll drive forwards and we'll turn at some point as well. And the amount we need to drive forwards is in this column. So very similar to this, we're going to grab some data from uh, the list and again we the row that we want is governed by the variable neck shape so that goes in there and the column is fixed for distance so it's always column two so I can put column two in here and that can go in how far I want to drive forward so that becomes now a piece of dynamic data it changes depending on which piece uh, which uh, row we're looking up in column two of the list and the same with the turn, so same thing again, this time of course. So we still want to get our whatever shape we're looking at from the next shape variable, but this time I want the data from column number three. That goes in there. Um, so we're repeating, in this case, three times, driving forward for 400 and turning right for 120 degrees. So that's going to give us our triangle. Uh, when the triangle has finished, so outside of that repeat loop here, I'm going to lift the pen up. And then I'm going to turn. Now, this is where turn to heading comes in really useful. Um, so I'm going to use turn to heading 90 degrees, which will always face me compass east. It will face me directly to the right across the field. What I don't want to do is I don't want to use turn right x number of degrees because all of my shapes are going to end me up uh, end up with me facing a different direction. And so, if, um, you know, if I come out of the pentagon and turn right 90 degrees to go this way, I'm actually probably going to end up driving across here somewhere because I'll end up, I won't end up facing directly up the field necessarily. So I'm always going to turn to heading 90 degrees, which means regardless of where I end up after drawing my shape, I'm always going to turn to face across to this side of the field. Uh, and then I want to move forward an arbitrary amount just to give myself a bit of space. So I'm going to, again, I'm guessing a bit, um, might need to change this value. So I'm going to go, if my, yeah, I'm going to go 450. So um, if my square and triangle are going to be 400 wide, then I'm hoping if I finish up in this corner, I'm going to clear it and before I start drawing the next shape. So drive forward 450 degrees. Now I need to turn back to heading zero. So up the field before I start. So turn to heading zero. And the last thing I need to do is I need to tell our code that now we've done this one and I need to move on to the next one. So I need to add one. I need to increment this variable by one. So if I go to variables, I can say change next shape by one. Um, so that basically will add one to that. So next shape then becomes two. So when we go back around this loop, we haven't finished yet because we haven't got to the full length of the array. So we're going to do this again. We'll put the pen down and this time we're going to repeat it next shape, which is now two. So row two, column one, we're going to repeat four times this time. And the next time it goes around this loop and this gets added on this three, it will look at this row because this is row three. 
and it will get that data. And the same for these, look. These are going to increment by one each time because it's using the same variable. Um, right, what I'm going to do before we run that program, let's hide this little button here help, uh, hides the, the toolbox, which is kind of cool, gives us a bit more space to work. So I'm going to have my code right over here. Let's have the uh, playground here. And I'm also going to open the monitor so we can see some of the data. Um, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm going to have to open my um, toolbox again just for a minute because what I want to do is I want to see the value of next shape because we want to see that incrementing. So I'm going to tick that so that that now appears um, in the monitor. And also, if I want to see the values of my lists, I can also say add lists and add the shapes list as well to the monitor. And so now I can see my four rows and three columns of data there. Now that's not going to be particularly dynamic, that will just get set at the start um, and uh, uh, and it will stay the same. But it's uh, it's good to see that happening. Right, so now if I minimise this again, so we've got a bit more space. So we should be able to see the code running on uh, this side, so we'll see it working through. Uh, we'll see the robot drawing here and we can watch the data changing in the monitor panel here. Uh, right, so let's click go. and so next shape got set to one at the start and there's my three, four, five and six sided shape. And the robot's driven over and now we're going round the loop getting this data for the first shape. Turn to heading 90 degrees, drive straight across, back to zero degrees and move on to the next shape. You can see next shape has now been incremented, it's gone to two, so now we're getting this data here. Same again, four sided. Turn to heading 90 degrees when we're finished which is over here, drive forward 450, next shape gets incremented to 3, so now we're looking at the 5 sided shape data, and there we go, drawing the 5 sided shape, we'll end at a sort of a funny angle, but it doesn't matter because we're going to turn to heading 90 degrees, drive on, increment next shape to 4, get this row of data, and draw the hexagon. And there we go. So you can see by using a list and a variable, I've managed to draw four different shapes using the same piece of code because the code is getting its data from this list. Um, and there's masses, uh, multiple benefits to that. Firstly, my code's more efficient. Um, it's easier for me to uh, to change things if I need to. Um, if I want to add more shapes in, I can just make my list longer and add more shapes. And I don't have to change any of this code because the code will dynamically adapt um, because of the use of the variables and lists. Uh, so I hope that's been useful. Um, thank you for watching and uh, come back for another VexCode VR video tutorial soon.